Welcome back to the Forensics Detailing Channel. Today we are taking five Pace Wax protection products for your car that come from detailing scene brands. So last time we did, looked at products from the, the big brands that you can get over the counter at Halfords. This time we're looking at five highly rated products within the detailing scene. We're gonna be putting through a series of tests adding up all the points and giving you some recommendations. You know the score by now, so let's get started. Welcome back to the Forensics Detailing Channel, the home of all things detailing. If you want to learn how to machine polish your prized possession to absolute perfection, or navigate your way through the minefield and myriad of thousands of detailing products, then you have come to the right place, because we use a scientific approach to determine the best products on the market. So if you like your car to feel silky smooth and have that dripping wet gloss, then hit that subscribe and smash the bell button in order to get notified of all new content. You can also join us on the Patreon community where you can ask direct questions and get rewards and support the channel at the same time. For more information, see the description. So back to today's testing, let's run through our lineup of paste waxes. First up, the UK made Built Hamber Double Speed Wax. This blend of T1 Carnauba and hydrophobic polymers in this aluminium tin costs $14.99 for 250 grams. And next up is Infinity Wax Super Gloss Plus, which costs £33 for 200 grams and claims six months durability with a unique bespoke integrated solvent system, which sounds awesome, but I have no idea what it actually is. Next up is Simple Wax Armour Synthetic Wax, costing £40 for 200 grams. I've been hearing good things about this product and I'm really looking forward to getting a chance to test it in this video. Next up, we have Interdetailing Ceramic Crystal Coating Wax, costing £20 for 200 grams. And finally, guys, we have this Soft 99 Kuami, which is a Japanese wax, which again costs £20 for 200 grams. And at the time of shooting this video, you should still be able to get this from Nippon Shine. So straight on to results, we're looking at value for money based on the relative price per 100 grams. In fifth place, Simple Wax Armour, costing around 20 pounds per 100 grams. In fourth place is Infinity Wax Super Gloss, costing around 16 pound 50 for 100 grams. In joint second place is Kawami, costing around 10 pounds per 100 grams, and that is tied with interdetailing ceramic crystal coating wax, which also costs 10 pounds per 100 grams. Very strong price points. But the winner, with a staggering price of 6 pounds per 100 grams, is Built Hamber Double Speed Wax. This stuff is an absolute bargain. Next test, application and removal. So we've got some clean applicators, some lovely fresh microfiber and timing equipment. So in no particular order, let's run through each of the products. Built Hamber Double Speed Wax. This stuff picks up on the applicator well and I felt was the most spreadable of all of the products in this particular test. The only negative with this stuff is there is a slight resistance or grip when you go to buff it. And this is obviously more noticeable on a car rather than a test panel. Out of everything in the test, this product cures the quickest and gives you a nice dry cure which helps give you a smear-free finish. And here we have the Infinity Wax Super Gloss Plus. Again, no problems with pickup apart from the smaller sample jar, but I'm not factoring that in. All four of the remaining products are easy enough to spread, but they are just a tad thicker or waxier than the built hamber. One negative observation is that the wax film formed by the Super Gloss Plus is a little bit stiffer and thicker than the other products. This didn't actually make it that difficult to buff, 
although I just wasn't able to remove it in the same way with just one swipe. And I'm demoing that in this little particular video section here, but you notice it again when you actually apply it to a car panel. And a little bit more resistance as well on buffing, and you can see the sort of panel moving around and the microfiber perhaps clinging a little bit more. Next up is Simple Wax Armor, and again, no problems with pickup and no problems with spreadability of this particular product. One characteristic of this synthetic wax is it's a lot more translucent and harder to see. In fact, you only get a hazing when you put too much in, as you can see here. But this product is easy, in my opinion, to buff and uh, nice to work with. And here you can see inter-detailing ceramic crystal coating wax. This is a nice spreadable oily wax. It's got a good feeling to it underneath the applicator. One observation is that this product benefits from a slightly longer cure in my opinion. It will never go rock hard and be difficult to remove. But if you don't leave it um, long enough, it can still be a little bit wet and, and a wet wax when you remove it is more prone to smearing. So just give this an extra five minutes to cure and you'll be fine. The buff is really, really nice and smooth. And here we have Soft 99 Kuami Wax. I've always considered this product a good all-rounder, does everything reasonably well. And the application side of this is no exception. Again, it has the second best curing system in here um, that gives you a nice dry cure. If you put too much on though, it can be a little bit chalky, this wax. And also if you put too much on, you've got to again leave it to make sure it has all properly dry cured to avoid that kind of smeariness on removal. But again, this is a product which is really, really nice to work with. And finally, here's the results on application and removal from fifth place down into first place. This could be the most subjective part of this particular testing, guys. I've got my little criteria as a wax maker that I like to keep an eye on. And this is my order of the ones that I think, overall, I like the way they work the most. And Simple Wax Armour is the only one, really, that didn't have any major flaws Built Hamble was great on application, awesome on curing, but that little grippiness cost it the win. Next up guys, we're measuring slickness, and you can place as much importance to this test as you like. We're simply measuring which ones have the lowest friction to these brand new Magic Eraser pads. In first place, on that left hand side, was Built Hamber Double Speed Wax. Then after that was the Infinity Wax Super Gloss, which is next to it. That's interesting because the Super Gloss felt noticeably more grippy under the microfiber, but seems to still be giving a um, nice low friction surface against this pad. Then in third place on the right hand side is the Kiwami Wax. And in fourth place, the Ceramic Crystal Coating Wax from Interdetailing. And that places the Simple Wax Armour in fifth position. The next test is measuring gloss and haze. So we're lucky enough on this channel to have a very sophisticated piece of metering equipment called the Rowpoint IQ Gonio Photometer. In advance of taking all the measurements, we prep the panel using machine polish to give us a consistent finish across the panel, as consistent as possible. We degrease, we apply the products, and we leave them overnight before we do the testing. The results we observed are based on the average of 10 readings and we also sanity checked on another test panel as well. And here you can see the results of the gloss testing from 5th to 1st with the interdetailing ceramic crystal coating wax 
picking up the most gloss. And the haze results in first place with a significant jump up was the translucent looking simple wax armor. So next up, we are looking at beading or water repellency or hydrophobidility, whatever you want to call it. And whether or not this is important is down to you. I normally have a very good eye for spotting the difference with these, but I struggled. All I could tell from this first round was that Kwame was not as repellent as the others, but it's still decent. So the next step was to lower the um, roll down angle of the panel to try and slow everything down, which would make it easier to separate them. It became evident at this point that the most hydrophobic, fastest water repellent product here was the Simple Wax Armour. And then for the first time ever, I think I failed to separate the difference between Built Hamber Double Speed, into Detailing CCCW, and Infinity Wax Super Gloss Plus. So I declared all three of them joint second. The next test is durability or chemical resistance testing. So as always, we're using the Garage Therapy Decom Wash with my Detail Factory brush. The brush I find is a better tool for doing this because you can rinse it out afterwards and it's less likely to store old product residues than a microfiber cloth or a wash mitt. Here you can see after the first hit, all of the products are still chugging along and functioning very well. Now we fast forward to the fifth hit of this Decom Wash used neat. And you can see that two of the products, in particular the interdetailing CCCW and the Simple Wax Armour, are now suffering and slowing down. You can see a bit of slowdown on the Infinity Wax as well. Built Hamber seems to be going great, and the Kiwami has slowed down a little bit as well. And here we finally fast forward to the 15th hit, that's 1-5. The Kwame is still going, but it's very, very slow now, and it's at the point where you'd want to top it up. The inter-detailing product is, there's still stuff there, but you'd want to top up. It's, there's no water action going on now. Same with the Simple Wax Armour. Um, some trace elements of the product, basically, but virtually nothing. And then if we move over to the two strongest durability products, the Infinity Wax, it's come back a little bit from before. So it was suffering, but now that looks good. And the Built Hamber has actually slowed down. So they've crossed over, and I always like it when that happens. Both these two products here are done well. This is 15 rounds of very strong um, detergent that, that attacks these products. So that is really, really impressive performance. And here's the overall results, in my opinion. And finally guys, one last category that I call desirability, which is a combination of the packaging, the instructions, and the overall presentation and the scent and the quality of the pour. In last place is Built Hamber Double Speed Wax. This product comes in a functional but industrial looking tin. There are no instructions whatsoever on the tin and the product has a sort of musky solvent smell, which some people may not appreciate. And in fourth place, again with an industrial tin like Built Hamber, but with just a slightly more pleasant coconutty scent, was the interdetailing ceramic crystal coating wax. In third place is the Infinity Wax. Now this is just a sample one guys, and the main pot looks pretty similar to the sort of simple wax pot, but good glass sample jar. The only thing is the top of the jar is imprinted and made a little circle in the wax, which doesn't bother me, but affects the presentation mark. No froth, no cracking, no shrinkage, really nice presented wax, lovely berry scent, and a nice smooth look for it. Very tidy and impressive. Could argue for this price that you might want to get a free applicator with it or something, but most of the products in this test don't have that. So uh, a solid third place for the Infinity Wax. 
In second place, with a really well-designed, bespoke tin that also holds an applicator in there, perhaps the best functional tin, is the Kwame. Yes, there's a bit of shrinkage uh, uh, on this wax, but it also, there's a bit of a solvent must to it as well, but there's a slight orangey turpentine sort of smell to this. And I just think that it looks really desirable in this funky kind of Japanese packaging and it was worthy of a second place in the desirability stakes. And the one that I got the most excited about was the Simple Wax Armour. It's not Simple Wax, it's doing it a disservice. It's a, it's a cool wax, it's a complex wax, it's a unique wax. It's well presented in a frosted jar with a really nice logo on it. It's a smooth pour, it's a pure white wax and it has a slight lemon scent to it. The only thing I can criticise it on is a little bit of bubbling around the outside, but Jesus, there you go. I felt this was the most desirable one, um, and it picked up the first place in the desirability category. And finally, guys, the moment you've all been waiting for, the overall winner of this test. Yes, you may have guessed it, it is Built Hamber Double Speed Wax. Let's talk about why. I can pick up weaknesses of any product that I review. With the Built Hamber product here, you could say that it's slightly grippy on buffing. You could also say that it's slightly industrial looking. Um, so it lacks that kind of desirability of some of the more boutique products. And you'd be right. But you often hear the expression in detailing forums of buy cheap, buy twice. This wax is an example that that saying is absolutely not true in all cases. This wax, guys, does everything well. It's easy enough to apply. It's got a great curing system in there. You get 250 grams. The wax is functional enough. Um, the durability and detergent resistance and beading on application is nice. And it gives that warm Carnauba gloss. It also does this for a fraction of the price of other products on the market. And again, that sets a benchmark in performance and affordability that is really, really hard for other products to beat. And that is why we do these tests. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this kind of comparison. The testing will always tells me a thing or two about these products and I think it's pretty useful. Um, there's no substitute for just blasting your way through these products out in different cars and using them to really learn about them. Um, what am I taking away from this, guys? Well, the thing I'm taking away is that you hear the word scene tax and the detailing scene is out to take your money. Well, in fact, the detailing scene in the UK is vast and the detailing scene is also capable, as well as offering you kind of unique products and cool products, it's, it's capable of offering you value and actually smashing the kind of big label brands on value. Not always, you know, sometimes, you know, it's give and take. Um, but I think in this test, we've got some example of some products which are incredibly cheap and also perform well. We've got some examples of products which are incredibly well made and a little bit more expensive. Um, so you've got kind of everything there. Hope this was useful, guys. What I want to do next is I want to take some of the most expensive iconic waxes ever made. Um, perhaps waxes are talked about a little bit less now, but they used to be the creme de la creme and there were some very high-end offerings. I'm gonna pick four or five of the most high-end waxes I can, iconic waxes I can find and test them. In the meantime, guys, let me know what you thought of this video. If you've used any of these products, let me know what you think about those products. Please subscribe to the channel and if you wanna get involved and join the community, on Patreon to support the channel, ask me questions about polishing or what detailing products you wanna use. Check out the Patreon page, which is linked in the description and all the different tierings and rewards that you get with those might be useful. So thanks very much for watching guys. Take care and I'll see you soon.